Well, hello and welcome back to Supposedly Fun. My name is Greg. Trying a different angle today. I usually sit, at, I've been sitting at the kitchen table lately and there's a, the front windows are behind me. Really, either way I sit, there's going to be a window. So I'm trying something a little different for lighting purposes. And I have a lot of books to cover because this is my book haul for January. So if this works, I might do more of this. But that's neither here nor there. You're just here to know about my book haul. So first, let's start with some just in. So I did my video on new releases that I'm looking forward to in 2020, and a friend here on BookTube actually sent me a couple of those, including American Dirt by Janine Cummins. This is the book that is currently courting a whole lot of controversy. Um, I had, was undecided about whether or not I was going to read it. I actually removed my library hold from it, but here it is. Um, so if you're, if you're not familiar with the controversy, uh, basically it comes down to her portrayal of Mexican people and issues and poverty and uh, drug cartels, um, and whether or not it's problematic. So since I have a copy, I may read it and try it for myself and see what I think, but uh, undecided yet. Oh, and as always, I, do, I usually do the first sentence of a book. Oh, that's fun. I hadn't seen that yet. And here is the first sentence. One of the very first bullets comes in through the open window above the toilet where Luca is standing. Uh-oh. Uh, he also sent me The Big Goodbye, Chinatown, and The Last Years of Hollywood. This is about the movie Chinatown and the making of it and uh, where it stood in Hollywood and uh, the, the transition of Hollywood in the 70s, uh, which is something that I am particularly interested in. This is by Sam Watson, who wrote the book Fosse, which the TV show Fosse Verdon was based on. Let's see what the first sentence of this is. Sharon Tate looked like California. Interesting. Wouldn't have expected it to start like that. Next, he sent me a copy of Real Life by Brandon Taylor. I'm really excited about this, so let's do the description of this. Almost everything about Wallace is at odds with the Midwestern University, a town where he is working uneasily toward a biochem degree. An introverted young man from Alabama, black and queer, he has left behind his family without escaping the long shadows of his childhood. For reasons of self-preservation, Wallace has enforced a wary distance even within his own circle of friends, some dating each other, some dating women, some feigning straightness. But over the course of late, a late summer weekend, a series of confrontations with colleagues and an unexpected encounter with an ostensibly straight white classmate conspired to fracture his defenses while exposing long hidden currents of hostility and desire within their community. So looking forward to this book. First sentence, it was a cool evening in late summer when Wallace, his father dead for several weeks, decided that he would meet his friends at the pier after all. So, there you go. And finally, in that in that box was Conditional Citizens by Leila Lalami. Now, I read Leila Lalami's novel, The Other Americans, last year. Was I thought it was okay. Um, so this is a nonfiction book about uh, immigration and just sounds super fascinating. Can't wait to read it. Ch the first sentence is, this is a story about love and country and I will tell it to you how I remember it in strands that took me years to untangle and then thread together. Now we get to the titles that I actually purchased myself, uh, and let's start with a tiny one. So I, I, I don't have the name in front of me, but somebody had commented on uh, one of my videos in the past to ask if I would uh, read A Single Man by Christopher Isherwood and post my thoughts about it. And the, the, it, I told them that it's a book I had been thinking about reading and would hope to get to it at some point in the near future. And then I was in a bookstore and found this tiny little pocket edition from uh, Picador Modern Classics and just thought it was adorable and, you know, why not grab it? Because it's actually, I, my concern about these was the, how readable they are, and you know, it looks really tiny in, on the screen, but it's actually not as tiny as you would think in person. So, very much looking forward to this. Let's see what the first sentence is. Waking up begins with saying M and now. Hmm. Then, uh, because my reading goals are to read outside my comfort zone, and part of that includes reading outside of uh, North America and Europe, um, an author I zoomed in on was Natsuo Carino and the, this book, Out, which I've heard good things about. And uh, I remembered Eric Carl Anderson had did a post on Instagram a while ago about these Japanese vintage editions, and I thought they were beautiful. So I ordered this one that was actually available in the U.S., and I ordered two more um, one from the U.S. and one, for, uh, actually both of the other ones I think came from the, one came from Book Depository and one actually had to be ordered from Amazon UK because it's just not available here. But uh, this is about four women who work the graveyard shift at a factory burdened with heavy debts 
Alienated from husbands and children, they all secretly dream of a way out. A young mother among them finally cracks and strangles her philandering, gambling husband. She confesses her crime to her colleagues, and unexpectedly, they agree to help. But when the dismembered body parts are discovered, the police start asking questions, and more dangerous enemies begin to close in. Out is a psychologically taught and unflinching examination of the darkest recesses of the human soul and what makes the most ordinary person do the unimaginable. Sounds fascinating, and I've really struggled with mystery thrillers or psychological thrillers, so I'm hoping this is going to be a good one. First sentence, she got to the parking lot earlier than usual. Hmm. And there is a note on currency to help you convert, except it's from yen to pounds. So that's not going to help me <laughs> at all. So moving along. Now, part, also part of that read outside your comfort zone, I want to read genres I don't usually engage in. And I had mentioned that I got a copy of The Fifth Season by N.K. Jemisin for my niece to give her for Christmas. Uh... And they only had one copy of it at the time, so I they got it back in stock at one of my local indies. Grabbed a copy for myself. This is the first volume of the Broken Earth series. Um, I've heard really good things about it. Very much looking forward to it. I love N.K. Jemisin's politics and identity. So, and as a fun fact, uh, when I was looking into buying that book for my niece, I discovered that N.K. Jemisin's first name is Nora, and that is my niece's first name. So it was just a fun connection. So, very much looking forward to giving her a try in 2020. Oh, I love a book with a map. Check that out. <laughs> and the first sentence is, let's start with the end of the world, why don't we? Sounds like a good place to start. Uh, I also bought a copy of Such a Long Journey by Rohinton Mystery. I've mentioned this before. Uh, this is going to be for a buddy read uh, coming up in the month of February. I'm getting ready to start it. Uh, I loved Rohinton Mystery's A Fine Balance. It was my second favorite book of 2019. So very much looking forward to this. So if you remember, A Fine Balance is actually set during in, in the uh, leadership years of, Prime, of Indira Gandhi and uh, deals with the controversy of that. This actually does as well, following a character named Gustad Noble who becomes involved in everything going on. The first sentence is, The first light of morning barely illumined the sky as Gustav Noble faced eastward to offer his orisons to Ahura Mazda. I don't know if I said some of those words correctly, but looking forward to reading this in February. Now, I've got a lot of recommendations about authors from other countries, especially Australia, from people uh, on that video about my 2020 reading goals. And among them, Tim Winton was mentioned several times, and I happened to be in the used bookstore in my area and saw that they had several of his books. I immediately grabbed Cloud Street, because that seems to be the one that most people point to, and it sounds very good. When two large working-class families, the Lambs and the Pickles, are forced to share a massive house and inevitably their lives, their past misfortunes and conflicting personalities merge in a breathtaking ex explosion of joy, tragedy, and the occasional miracle. It's a bit of a chunky book. First sentence is... Will you look at us by the river? There you go. Another genre I don't typically engage with is the Western, although I did read a Western in the month of January to try to kick this 2020 reading challenge off. Uh, it was recommended to me that I read a different Western before I read Lonesome Dove by Larry McMurtry. I grabbed a copy of this because I want to read this in March for March of the Mammoths. Uh, Rick from Another Kick at the Candlet has kindly agreed to read along with me. So looking forward to that. It's a big, 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 big book. It is 857 pages. The first sentence is... Let's see. When Augustus came out on the porch, the blue pigs were eating a rattlesnake. Not a very big one. That should be fun. <laughs> and then this was actually a gift from uh, the bookstore I shop at in town. It's Meg, Joe, Beth, and Amy, The Story of Little Women and Why It Still Matters by Amy Boyd Rue. Um, the, the person who's usually working there the day I go in is a huge fan of Little Women. She was really excited that I was reading it in December and January, so she gave me this as a Christmas present. Um, it is about the making of the book, and I'm really looking forward to getting to it, uh, and it was a really thoughtful gift from her. So, Then, uh, let's start with these two. I was in the, when I was in the used bookstore, I was checking, I've been checking periodically on and off to see when they would get more Sarah Waters books. I read The Pain Guests which, uh, last year, that was my first book by her, and I wanted to read more. They finally got some. There's Affinity and Fingersmith, and then I remember, I had a, after I read The Pain Guest, I had a conversation with Jason over at Old Blues Chapters and Verse uh, about Sour Waters, and he had told me that Tipping the Velvet is his favorite, so I went back to the other bookstore and got a copy of it from there. So now I have three Sour Waters, 
I don't think I'll be getting to all of them in 2020, but I definitely want to get to them. So let's start with tipping the velvet for a first sentence. Have you ever tasted a Whitstable oyster? I have not. I can say that with confidence. <laughs> and let's do affinity next. I was never so frightened as I am now. And fingersmith. My name in those days was Susan Trinder. Last book is something I got from Book of the Month. It's Tightrope Americans Reaching for Hope by Nicholas D. Kristoff and Cheryl Wu Dunn. Um, this is basically, it looks at the hometown where Nicholas came from uh, and the um, hard economic climate in the United States. Uh, should be an interesting book. Looking forward to this and I'm glad I got a nonfiction book in this mix. First sentence is, Dean Knapp was asleep when her husband Gary stumbled drunkenly into their white frame house after a night out drinking. And there you have it. Those are the books I brought into my library in the month of January, quite a lot. And then with the three boxes that my father shipped me, it's a lot. So I'm getting ready to do an evaluation of my bookshelves and really be tough and unhaul a lot of things. So um, stay tuned for that. But if you have thoughts about any of these books, I would love to hear them. Recommendations based on these, love to hear them as well. Maybe I should stay away from one of these. Let me know. You know what to do. Drop those down in the comments. And thank you for your time. As always, it is appreciated. And I will be back. Until next time, happy reading.